Hey y'all, and welcome back to the Scooter Woodworks Workshop. My name is Jordan. We're here for part two of my entry for the Great Guitar Build-Off 2021, which is a uh, Stratocaster style guitar with a quilted flame maple top. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on my building of the neck. We're going to go from taking the blanks that we saw in episode one to cutting out the rough shape uh, from the template to writing it to fit the template to installing the truss rod and the fretboard uh, on up through radiusing, fretting, and shaping. Uh, I'd like to get the neck done before we get to the body, so I need to get on with it. Okay, so the first step for me was to get the shape of the neck transferred onto my neck blank, and so I did that by placing the template on. I secured it with a couple of screws through holes I knew would be covered and traced it on. Um, had to clean up those screw holes. I'm gonna make sure it would lay flat marked the location of where the nut would be, marked where the tuning pegs would be, and then the next step was to mark the location of the truss rod so I would know where to wrap that channel. So I'm doing that with a quarter inch spiral bit in my router table. I got my fence set up so that I can run basically along the center, and I'm following some marks that I have on the side of the neck blank so I can see where to begin and end the passes. Um, and I'm doing this in several passes so as not to risk tear out. And on that last one, I used the um, truss rod itself there to figure out how high the bit needs to go. And that little end bit with the adjuster nut is a little bit bigger. And so I'm taking the time to route that just a little bit deeper. And then off camera, I clean it up with a chisel. After getting that done, it's time to cut out the rough shape at the bandsaw. What I'm doing here is getting as close to the line as I can without touching the line. And this is something I'm still practicing it and getting used to doing and doing well. One of the things that I, I did do, as you can see here, is cut relief cuts into these curves to make it just a little bit easier to go around the curves on the headstock. And with that job done, it was time to clean that up as close to the lines as I could get with the oscillating belt sander. And with the oscillating belt sander work done, I reattached the template back on the neck. And this is why I wanted those screws so I could get it back in an exact place and then route the shape of the neck. that turned out pretty good. So off camera, I took that piece of Bacote that I had dimensioned down and um, resawed it and planed it. And then I marked out where the fretboard would be on that, laid out the fret locations with a uh, fret ruler. I just got that double sticky tape to help me see where the lines would be. And then I slotted the frets with a fret slotting saw blade on my table saw. And the next step was to rough cut out the fretboard. Again, very close to the lines, but not on the line so that there would be a little bit of overhang left to kind of sand off. And then to route flush once I get it attached to the neck, which is the next step. So what I'm doing here, you're just drilling a couple holes inside the frets, one near the top, one near the bottom of the fretboard. So that way I can use finishing nails to locate them where they need to be. So I get the fretboard where it should be and use some clamps to clamp it down and get a little hammer and some finishing nails and drive those in. So now when I remove the fretboard to, do, to apply glue and input the truss rod as I'm doing here, I know exactly where that fretboard needs to go back. And I'm able to get it in there using those pins and get my other C-clamps out and use some calls to keep from marking up the fretboard too badly. In the neck, 
we clamp that bad boy down. And then after the glue's had some time to set, we take it out of the clamps, take it over to that oscillating belt sander and get the fretboard very close. And then we take it to the router table with the flush trim bit. And when I'm doing this, I have a little mishap here. That you're gonna see that I'm trying to fix here, but I'm gonna elaborate on that. So one thing that was obvious in the footage I shared of me routing the um, fretboard trim or flush trimming the fretboard to the uh, neck was that I had a little bit of chip out here on the very end of the fretboard. I don't know how well it, you saw it in the camera before when it happened and when I was gluing that little piece back in, but you can see it now. Um, I should have known better. I got a little careless around the end grain and I had a lot of faith in my brand new cutter that I was using. But what I've been able to do is CA glue it in and it is on that very last fret. And what I'm hoping I can do is that once I get this bad boy radius, I can fill in that gap further with some sawdust, uh, if necessary, even fill in the fret slot with sawdust because I can carve that back out or slot that back out with my fret saw um, to solve that issue. So hopefully it doesn't cause any issues uh, for going forward with it. If, if I get you know, this thing filled in and it looks good, we're going to run with it. If I get it filled in and I'm not happy with how it looks, uh, I guess I'll be making a new neck. alert so spoiler little alert I didn't really have to make a new neck um, but here what you see me doing at the bandsaw is uh, cutting the headstock roughly to thickness and then I got a fence set up mad props to the shed of dreams channel over here on YouTube where I learned this trick using a 2 by 4 to um, make a fence then that I can control how uh, thick um, the final thickness here of the headstock is. So it controls the space then, you know, uh, between the 2x4 and the spindle sander here. And it's able to sand that down pretty well. You get a nice little uh, curve on the top of that fretboard. You see me kind of looking at it, trying to make sure I'm keeping it square so I have a nice perpendicular line across the top. It might not be perfectly perpendicular, but it's pretty darn close on the final version of the neck. So the next thing I set out to do was to sand the radius onto the fretboard. And there's a lot of folks I see who, you know, like to begin, you know, with a block plane or um, something, you know, a little bit more aggressive to start getting that radius done. I like to do the whole thing with a radius sanding block and sandpaper. So I just start with 80 grit and, you know, do it to it. I keep kind of going using my little uh, bench broom there, dusting the sand, uh, sawdust off. And keep going at it long enough and eventually we get it to the nine and a half inch radius that I'm looking for. So then once I'm happy with that, which I think after this pass I am, we pull that sandpaper off and we move up to 150. So put some more pencil marks on there, make sure I can see everywhere the sandpaper's touching. Give it a nice few strokes. And once you, you know, get it to the radius with that 80 grit sandpaper, you know, it doesn't take as much longer with the subsequent grits. And so that's just a few strokes at 150 and I get to 220. Put a little pencil mark on that. Give it a few strokes. Still looking good with the radius. So pull that off and now we're gonna go to 400, which is the final grit that I'm gonna be sanding this fretboard to.
as I'm radiusing it. So now at this point, I'm not so much shaping it as getting it nice and smooth. So with my um, radius on the fretboard now, what I'm doing is marking the location for side dots. So if you follow me over on Instagram, I did a little poll in the stories and asked on the post where I shared photos of the fretboard whether I should put some dot markers on this. Beautiful Bocote and the consensus uh, was no. And so what I'm doing instead, because I didn't want to produce something that had no dot markers at all or no kind of marking, um, was I'm putting some you know white side dots on it. So I went through and marked and counted out where the frets were that needed the dots, needed the little tiny markers on the side, and got my tiniest drill bit, drilled those holes out, got some CA glue, and glue it in, had to find my nippers, nip it off, same thing. And then with each one, took a little bit of that fretboard sawdust that I saved from the radiusing and filled it in. So it wouldn't have any gaps around that. And that sanded up and cleaned up really well. I was real pleased with how that turned out. So what you see me doing here to sand it off is I've got a little piece of uh, cut off from the neck blank that I know has a straight edge. I'm just wrapping the sandpaper around that so that way I've got a nice little sanding block and I know that my sanding is going to be nice and flat, not making any indentions by using my fingers or anything like that. I am preparing after I have radius the fretboard, done everything I'm going to do to this neck except put in the tuners and put in the nut. Now it's time to put in the frets. So what I'm going to do is use this triangular shaped file. I'm going to run it into the fret slot just a couple of times just to kind of open it up a little bit. And I've been assured by Guitar Building YouTube all it takes. I've been assured by Guitar Building YouTube that this will make the job a little bit easier if ever this guitar needs refretting. And I guess it will if my buddy spends a lot of time playing it over the years. So, um, the next step is to press the frets in. I have a tool here um, that goes into my drill press. It has different uh, radius blocks for the different um, radius, radius frets nicks that you use. And I know that the last one I used was the nine and a half inch radius, and so that's what's in here. And so, we're going to go ahead and get this chucked up in the drill press and get started.
do is I take my file, pop it in right there, and I can bevel the frets now. And my goal with the beveling is just to take the sharp ends off so I don't uh, cut my hands or my knuckles anymore while I'm dealing with that. So I attempted to record my audio while I was talking about what I was about to do here, but the noise from my fans trying to stay cool in the garage last workshop were too loud. So I'm gonna give a little voice over here for this. So obviously I moved on to the last part before finish, which is carving the shape of the neck. Um, the tools I'm gonna to be mainly using are these wood rasps that I have in my hand right now. Um, I'll also be using uh, a little bit of my uh, block plane and also sure form plane, but my approach is going to be to cut in the profile around the first fret and then the profile around the twelfth fret and then connect it to. And to help me do that, I've got a handy little template that I'm about to pick up there. This came from Stumac, and that's the profile of, at the first, the seventh, and twelfth, as well as the heel profile for a 62 Stratocaster. And that's the model I'm gonna be using for this neck. Um, I got it on sale and it was pretty cheap. It's pretty handy, so I do kind of recommend that. You know, that there's a lot of things that I would build a template for, but you know, a neck profile or something like that is something I'm a little bit more comfortable with having something like that. Um, So and you'll see here in a minute that I kind of get started with rasps to cut in the shape around the first and the 12th fret after I get uh, everything marked up on this neck. So I can kind of see what I'm gonna be doing, marking in sort of where I'm gonna put the heel, where the volute will be. And I start rasping away. So rasp a little bit there. You know, in an effort to kind of trim the video down, I cut a good bit of me rasping out. So there I'm getting close on the first fret carve, and now here I'm working on the 12th fret carve, and getting close there. So I had started working at the neck a little bit with my block plane and with the sure form plane and with the rasps, but uh, my arms got tired and uh, I had done this before with a belt sander and I said, you know what, I'm going to do it again. And that's what I'm doing here. So, you know, I've got the first facet on the corners with the block plane and the sure form plane and the rasp. But then after I got those first facets in, I just kind of went with the belt sander and you see me kind of working at it from different angles. Um, when I get it down pretty close, I begin working on the pattern around the heel. And so here what I'm about to do is kind of mark in what's gonna be the final shape of that heel. So I've got a little bit more of a guide for I want to round that thing over. And I'm not going any for anything particular there except symmetrical. That's basically what my goal is. And I think you'll see me here in this footage kind of get at it a little bit more with the rasp. My goal here was to get it as symmetrical as possible. And there was a lot of footage of me just seeing that I cut. Okay, so I finished the rough shaping of the neck. I got my volute carved here and the transition into the heel done here but as I finish sand or sand to smoothness I'm going to really avoid the sides because I want to make sure I keep a nice tight fit into the neck pocket of the body and you know I'll sand a little bit on the top probably with really fine grit just to get the pencil mark out but there's not really tool marks on the top of this and this whole side since it will barely be seen I might just leave it alone uh, maybe try to erase with a rubber eraser because the pencil marks that sort of thing. What I'm really focusing on now is getting the marks from the last out, which I have quite a few here. And still some up here at blue. But I think if I can get those rasp marks out, um, this will hopefully turn out very nice.
Let's do some singing. Okay, so that's going to really wrap it up for this video, part two of my great guitar build-off entry. You know, I figured there's more exciting things that you can do than, than uh, watch me sand. So what I'm going to do is close the video out with a few images of the finished neck. So that way you can get some uh, idea of the detail that went into it um, and sort of what it looks like, at least before the finish goes on. So as always, if you like what you see, you know, please hit that like button. And if you want to be notified for when the next part, part three on the body comes live, make sure you hit that bell. Uh, check me out on Instagram as well. And I hope you follow along and you're having as much fun watching this as I am doing it. So y'all take care.